it was midday on a Thursday. There I was, transpecting cell lines to study the effect of a mutation on melanoma progression. That's when the bleeding started. I grabbed my phone and called Bashar, my husband who was in the middle of an opening ceremony representing his company. We may lose our child, I said. He ran out of the ceremony, tearing part of his suit jacket in the process. My lab aid helped me get in the car and we reached the hospital. One hour later, and after crossing half the country to reach me, Bashar made it to the hospital. We waited, hoping to hear the heartbeat of my unborn child. The placenta has detached from the wall of the uterus. It's a 50-50 chance you may lose the baby and you need to be on the It was a somber moment. Now to put this in perspective, I was pregnant and in the middle of a post-doctorate fellowship and a scientific discovery in my research, a new undiscovered mutation that may cause melanoma, the deadliest skin cancer. What am I going to do to balance the needs of my unborn child and the needs of my career? It's a challenge that many women face and a decision that will ultimately impact both your career and your family obligations. Face challenges every day, but what do you do when you face these challenges? Do you allow them to become obstacles, blocking your dreams and ambitions? Or you turn them into opportunities, which requires an incredible amount of patience and determination. Six months later, our precious Sarah was born. And shortly after that, I was a co-author of a high impact publication. Now, believe me when I say I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel at that period of time. However, my determination kept me going. Sitting in bed with a computer in one hand I, and my medication in another, I started to look at other projects that did not require me to be physically present in the lab. That was a departure from the plan I set for myself, yet a challenge that was forced upon me and which repeated itself in the not so distant future. Once Saira was born, the next challenge was how child while committing to a postdoctorate fellowship that involved driving over 150 kilometers every day just to get to the labs at the Wiseman Institute of Science and back. Waking up at 4 a.m. to gain valuable afternoon time with my family, driving in the fog, passing checkpoints, getting stuck at checkpoints were some of my daily challenges. I made sure Sara was well cared for during my work hours the duty fell on my mother, who sits among us today, and my mother-in-law, who volunteered to help, which pushed me to ensure that every second of my day was well utilized without any waste to complete my research. It is true, I'm not alone in this experience, and there is no question that the work pressure at that period of time could not have been mitigated without the support of my immediate family. Sacrificing my time with my child was never going to be easy. However, any woman who has set herself a target to succeed will have 
to make sacrifices, be it physical, mental, or emotional. When Saira was three years old, my husband and I decided it was time to get her a brother or sister. It was 2016. I was 31 years old, feeling ready and well equipped to start an academic career as a researcher and as an assistant professor at a Palestinian university. What we did not expect is that our family would almost double overnight. I got pregnant with twins. Now, twins were a whole new ball game, and my immediate reaction was that it was impossible to have a career, let alone be successful in it, while taking care of the twins and Sara. However, my determination kept me going, and I felt at that period of time that I had to take a gap year and devote myself to my children. I was worried a gap year in my resume would be an issue. It may give an impression that I'm unsuccessful, but devoting myself to my three precious kids at that critical phase of their lives, for me, was essential and a priority. Yes another departure from the plan that I set for myself. And today, I have no regrets regarding the decision I made. And at the end of 2018, I joined the Arab American University as an assistant professor. And the challenges repeated themselves, but in a different form. دخلت الأراضي الفلسطينية حالة الطوارئ التي أعلنها الرئيس الفلسطيني محمود عباس لمواجهة خطر تفشي فيروس كورونا في البلاد. I felt eager to contribute to the COVID-19 research and put Palestine on scientific map with the target of piecing how it fits globally. It seemed impossible at that period of time to commit to research while taking care of Omar and Faris who were at home and homeschooling Sara, a first grader. But my determination and the support of my husband made the impossible possible. Yes. I initiated projects, rolled up my sleeves, and with tremendous backing and foresight, my team and I opened up international collaborations and we were able to quickly be the front runners at understanding the genetic makeup of SARS-CoV-2 in Palestine. We sequenced viral genomes using state-of-art technologies. This required dealing with the live virus with the risk that it could infect us as well. So there were days when I had to quarantine myself from my family. And despite all the precautions I took, there were days when I used to go home with the fear that I was going to bring something with me that may harm my family. To go home stressed, exhausted, but I had to show a happy face and give my family the attention they needed. It was stressful times. And on the 3rd of September, we loaded our library into the machine. We were tired, yet happy to share our data and add it to international databases. We were happy to put Palestine on the map. Today, we have a number of important publications on the matter. We are tracking new emerging variants. 
we are tracking over 1,000 vaccinated individuals and recovered patients to study the profile of their antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. And we're in the middle of other projects aiming at studying T cells and the genetic makeup of patients. Because of our work, our labs have become a reference point to patients, governments, and other researchers around the world. I love a good riddle. And this is precisely the sort of scientific riddle that possesses a great opportunity to help the common person understand his or her immunity, his or her status against the infection. I get calls from people every day, mornings and evenings. Can you please explain my test result? Do I have antibodies? Do I have T cells? Is the vaccine effective? Shall I take the vaccine? Can I be a participant in your study? The comfort I feel in people's voices gives me a push to keep going, initiate new projects, and even take my research a bit too far. In February of this year, my three kids tested positive for COVID. I cried. I got stressed. I got worried, but at the same time, I felt a light bulb flash in my head. Wouldn't it be beneficial to track the viral load and progression of the disease to further our understanding of the disease? Wouldn't it be beneficial to study the effectiveness of the vaccine that I received one month ago? Using myself for research meant taking daily swabs, along with multiple tests for the kids. Well, to be honest, uh, my heart did not allow me to go more extreme with my precious kids. And believe me, taking swabs from fussy three-year-old twins in the middle of an online course for a first grader was a big challenge. Those days that saw my family quarantined for almost a month, worrying about, them. thank God they were asymptomatic, taking care of them while remotely running a lab and a department, and my husband remotely running his company were some of our toughest days. Challenges repeated themselves in a different form throughout my career. And each time I felt overwhelmed, stressed, exhausted, guilty, and thought many times of giving up. However, my passion for my career and having a support structure around me always instigated a solution even in those days when one was not a parent. So my message is, choose a career you love and trust in yourself. I remember in high school, the curriculum was designed in such a way that put every student in his or her own stereotypical box, whereby top students were expected to pursue a career in medicine. And only those who had failed to make it to medical school were advised to look into a career in science. I decided not to be that stereotype, as you can be successful in any path you desire and choose, a message that was instilled upon me by my beloved parents. For me, that was science even though I should have been placed in a hospital treating patients. And today, I'm the scientist and the academic I wanted to be, and I have a happy home. I do understand it's not easy for everyone. As young women, we live in a society where our potential is challenged and even questioned. 
At the age of 26, I graduated with a PhD degree. There I was, heading to my first meeting, full of excitement, when my colleagues decided to refer to me as Bint Ed Doctor Muhammad. Well, don't get me wrong, I'm proud of my father who sits among us today and who was a role model for me growing up. But Dr. Anwar would have also been nice. Well, it took a few more face wrinkles to hand me the title. But if you ever go through a similar experience, I say, make the title you have earned at any young age rightfully yours. So my advice is, challenge yourself and use whatever tools you have to make it work. Understand your limitations, but do not let them hinder your goals. There is always another way. Find it and be patient with yourself. You can be the mother and the career woman you want to be. Choose a career you love and a partner who will support you and encourage you to keep going. And thank you for listening.